Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitle in Arabic. Olaxi, also known as Vietnamese, Bulgarian, Chinese, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi. Romanian, Russian, Spanish and Thai. Xin gửi lời chào nồng nhiệt nhất đến quý khán giả từ bi. Tôi tên là Kim Lâu, đến từ Bảo Lộc tại quốc gia Âu Lạc quyến rũ, còn được biết là Việt Nam. Tọa lạc tại Đông Nam Á, quốc gia Âu Lạc còn được biết là Việt Nam. Với 54 nhóm dân tộc cùng chung sống hài hòa, quốc hiệu truyền thống của Âu Lạc có nghĩa là con rồng cháu tiên. Trải qua 4.000 năm văn hiến cùng hệ thống tín ngưỡng đa dạng bao gồm Đạo Cao Đài, Phật Giáo, Thiên Chúa Giáo, Đạo Hòa Hảo. Âu Lạc là quốc gia với nền văn hóa và truyền thống phong phú, đặc sắc luôn giang tay chào đón cả thế giới khám phá. Âu Lạc Việt Nam còn vang danh với cảnh sắc diễm tuyệt, từ những làng quê nên thơ, muôn màu, nét mình bên sườn đồi, đến những cánh đồng bậc thang, mênh mông, non cao hùng vĩ, và kỳ quan vịnh Hạ Long, điểm xuyết những hòn đảo tuyệt mỹ cùng vô vàng bờ biển cát trắng. Được tổ chức giáo dục khoa học và văn hóa Liên Hiệp Quốc UNESCO Công nhận là di sản thiên nhiên thế giới Người dân Âu Lạc Việt Nam thân thiện, hào phóng Với niềm tin yêu cùng hy vọng mãnh liệt Với nụ cười thân thương duyên dáng trên môi Họ nồng nhiệt chào đón tất cả những ai đến viếng thăm xứ sở diệu kỳ Âu Lạc Việt Nam. Chúng tôi thật vinh hạnh chia sẻ với quý vị đôi nét về quốc gia Âu Lạc Việt Nam. Xin nguyện cầu tháng ngày quý vị đơm hoa với niềm vui và phúc lành. Trong hơn ba thập niên, Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư đã soi sáng thế giới bằng giáo lý thiên liêng, là một vị minh sư toàn giác. Ngài truyền đạt pháp môn quán âm cho những ai khao khát tức khắc tìm lại Thượng Đế Tánh bên trong, hầu đạt được giải thoát vĩnh hằng trong kiếp này khỏi vòng sinh tử luân hồi. Pháp môn quán âm đã được tu tập bởi tất cả các vị minh sư như Đức Phật, Chúa giê nhà tiên tri Mohammed, hòa bình đến với Ngài, và Đạo sư Nanak. Ngài đã nhấn mạnh, nếu chúng ta luôn tưởng nhớ Thượng Đế, phục vụ tha nhân một cách vô ngã, và tuân theo luật vũ trụ, chúng ta sẽ đạt được tiềm năng tối thượng của con người, và thật sự hiểu được mục đích của mình trên địa cầu này. Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư là một tấm gương sống phi thường về lòng từ bi. Ngài thường xuyên cứu trợ bằng hiện vật và tài chính, đồng thời gửi gắm tình thương cho những người tị nạn, vô gia cư, nạn nhân thiên tai và những người cần được trợ giúp khác. Vào năm 2006, Ngài đã nhận giải Gucci Hòa Bình được xem như là giải Nobel Hòa Bình ở phương Đông và được vinh danh suốt nhiều năm với rất nhiều giải thưởng khác cùng những lời ngợi ca 
về hoạt động nhân đạo và thiện nguyện tuyệt vời của Ngài là tiếng nói chân thành cho các bạn thú xinh đẹp. Ngài khuyến khích lối dinh dưỡng thuần thực vật, hòa bình và bác ái và những viễn cảnh tươi sáng với sự thức tỉnh của nhân loại về sự thiên liêng của muôn loài. Một thế giới thuần chay, bình yên và huy hoàng nơi các bạn thú và con người sống trong hạnh phúc hòa hợp. Những sáng kiến của Ngài nhằm phổ biến xu hướng thuần chay rất đa dạng, bao gồm phân phát tờ rơi lối sống mới, chuỗi nhà hàng thuần chay quốc tế Loving Hut, truyền hình vô thượng sư, cũng như trao đổi thường xuyên với quan chức chính phủ có tầm ảnh hưởng và lãnh đạo giới truyền thông, cũng như tham gia các buổi hội thảo truyền hình về nhận thức của chúng ta đối với biến đổi khí hậu. Những nỗ lực của Ngài đã mang lại ảnh hưởng to lớn tới nhận thức toàn cầu về lối sống thân thiện với các bạn thú và làm sao lối sống từ ái này có thể mang đến hòa bình trường tồn giữa các quốc gia, đồng thời cứu địa cầu khỏi nạn biến đổi khí hậu. Qua nhiều năm, Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư đã du hành khắp thế giới, từ châu Mỹ đến châu Phi, từ châu Âu đến châu Đại Dương và đã tổ chức hàng trăm buổi thuyết giảng trước công chúng cùng các đệ tử về nhiều chủ đề tâm linh. Hôm nay, chúng tôi hân hạnh được trình chiếu một trong những bài thuyết giảng sâu sắc với tựa đề Truyện Cổ Phật Giáo Củ Sen phần 2 trong 6 phần trên Giữa Thầy và Trò được giảng bằng tiếng Anh ngày 10 tháng 10 năm 2015 tại Pháp. Yes, sir. Huh? Uh, I just wanted to say thanks for allowing initiations because we heard the news today. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. But it is more strict this time. They have to meditate truly. Yeah. I have to vow to do it and be vegan. Not just pop in, pop out. Yeah? Not just come in to try. <laughs> I have to vow to take an oath that they will. From the day of initiation to the day they die, they must be veg- vegan. They must keep the five precepts. They must study, master teaching, and they must meditate two and a half hours. They must have faith in the teaching. Otherwise, they can be out before they start. I don't want any more, you know, people just come in and out like a hotel. Mm. They have to know it's a serious thing if they want to be liberation, yeah? if they want to have liberation. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't mind to suffer for any, but they have to be sincerely practicing, understand? Not to make a joke out of that, or just to come in out of curiosity and then don't even vegan, not even meditate, understand? And because of that, it's easily to fall into Maya's trap, understand? Mm. And bothering me, making me suffer more, and make them suffer also. Okay, okay. I read you some of a nice story here, huh? Mm. That I read while I was in the mountain. I marked them all. Look at that. <laughs> you see, I, uh, I say, mark them with the, because I don't have a marker in the mountain, so I have to do that. And then uh, oh, I have to read some some uh, some good example of, of people in the former former time. You know how they practice. I like very much. It's very very uh, uh, very uh, enthusiastic. Uh, very encouraging as well. Then some of the story I read for you already previously from other book, you see? So I have to check which one I haven't read for you. Yeah? Yeah. It's also a Buddhist story. Yeah. Ah, here it is. Mm, one of the just a simple story. Uh, maybe I check out, okay? Be patient. 
Yeah, if we could go to India, it would be nice, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, and then everybody can come there easily. Hmm? I was asking him about the gurus in India. Most of them are very famous, huh? Yeah, very famous and have good reputation and everything. In India, people don't talk bad about guru ever, you know, yeah. Even maybe bad name in somewhere else, but never in India, no. I was asking him because in India there are many very famous masters and they're all very rich anyway. The, the 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 one that famous that I knew very rich, and they they have big houses, big ashram. You can come and stay long. You have running hot water. Over here we also have running cold water. Sometimes it runs, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> now I let them come. The house is full. If no water, what to do? You know. I said no electricity. We can. Yeah, we can buy gas or, you know, or we can use candle lights. But no water, what to do? Understand? Oh, it was really some time. When you first came, everybody came. Everything just become broken immediately, you know. Yeah, right away, the first day already. And it continued like that many times, yeah? And then we fix it and then it broke again. <laughs> yeah, no water pressure, you know, because all the water running out. All the pipe never broken before broken. Imagine, yeah. And when I told the, the, the plumber, they don't even want to fix it. Say, oh, this is too big. We must wait till tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> wait till tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And then we have nothing. We will lose all the water, you know, in reserve, in the water tank. No? Yeah, yeah. And I say, you have to fix it now. <laughs> and then they did. <laughs> and then it works. Ever since then, we don't have problem anymore. Huh? Yeah. Toilets became very brave now. <laughs> very obedient and the water is running, you know. Yeah. And then, because nobody here anymore. <laughs> and then now we don't have anybody. <laughs> it's really funny, huh? My disciples, wow, they're famous. What are you doing? Oh, uh, open. Oh, okay. Okay, now you two, you three, go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Call them. Go, go. Happy, don't be too creepy. Not the dog. Of course they don't like to go. I also don't like, but I have many other things to do. Yeah, last time I kept her, normally they sleep with me in the cave, you know? But now we have also the big dog, you know, and... And then happy, she's not very, I don't know, she look for food all night, she walking tak 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 all night long. <laughs> different, different story now. <laughs> so she go down there, it's better in the morning, she must take medicine and all that on time, and I cannot be always regular, so it's better down there, and we come see each other all the time, you know, quality time. Yeah. Because she won't sleep anyway. She walk on the, the, the cave floor, like, like, like a horse all night long. Oh my God. And then I have to call uh, the assistant to come up and they wake them up at middle of the night or two, three o'clock in the morning. That's not nice for them. You see? Yeah. Uh, they, they see me anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay. So over there, big building, 30 some stories, and you didn't stay. No, just one day. <laughs> Why one day? Why not stay longer? Just one night because because I already found your booklet before, so oh. I was more interested with you. Oh, I see, I see. I was on just. Oh, she, she, they don't give initiation there? No, there's no initiation. Just hugging? There's a, little, a, small, a, small, <laughs> there's a small method of meditation, uh -huh. some booklet of spiritual teachings, uh -huh. but not really initiation or nothing really. Mm. They didn't speak to me. The teaching didn't speak to me as much as yours. Oh, I see. So you went there as so a last, yeah, just, last chance you gave. Famous, <laughs> just for just, to see. just in case, huh? <laughs> in case you miss out something. Yeah, why didn't you go to like Beas and all that? They give initiation. Uh, I, I was not looking. F I mean, I was not looking for liberation on anything. Understand? I was just so the liberation for... was looking for you. <laughs> and then. 
Yeah, I was not even aware of vegetarianism or, oh. or reincarnation oh. or stuff like that. I was just looking for something that can feel this emptiness. Yeah? You feel that empty? Yeah. Oh, so man. I didn't know what was the meaning of life and yeah. everything. I, I felt like something... No meaning, nothing. Yeah, huh? so, oh. so you have to go around the world to feel feel yourself with all these cities, people, <laughs> the scenery, huh? and then still not, not filled. Until, wow. I, until I found your booklet and wow. I went on the website and I, yeah. I read more about you and uh -huh. your teachings and everything, and then that was it. <laughs> that was it. Oh, man, okay. All the work and I feel your emptiness. <laughs> he went around the world on bicycle. Believe that or not, tough guy. Yeah. And then he found me, my booklet, in the, in the garbage. Garbage heap, a garbage can, and then he read it, and then he found out more. With all the gurus in India, he came back just to find me. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, in India, is if you want to find guru, it's a place to do. It's a place, you know, to find. So I don't know why you guys sitting here so ascetically like this. All the gurus there, you know, whoever meant to be guru or whatever the guru that maybe they all have very big house. For disciples, yeah, yeah, they don't have, <laughs> you know, house like this. Yeah, and even SMC become too small for you guys now. Yeah, whenever I walk, the the guard has to say, get, get let let, <laughs> let master pass, let. <laughs> and I have to care for where I'm walking, in case I walk on some foot or or hands or you know. All their, all their cups, <laughs> all their, their mattress, yeah. Man, they sit everywhere, they hang on the trees. <laughs> they sit on the steps, yeah. And they sit all over on the, the staircase, yeah, staircase. Yeah, and uh, even a little SMC have to make it three stories. <laughs> You know, three stories, SMC, really. <laughs> three stories in the hall, yeah? No. Okay, let me see. The downstairs is one floor. The second, the first floor is second floor. Another, the fourth floor. Four, yeah. One where they sit to translate. And then another, oh no. No, no, that, that is together, same. Okay, then only, yeah, three story. Okay, three story. It seems the many story to me when I sat there. So many eyes, <laughs> and they sit on the staircase. You know, they sit. Uh, they sit on where before there was. We have a better thing. You know, we have kitchen and dining room, and then now they sit in the kitchen and the dining room's gone. <laughs> you go outside to eat. Everything on the uh, the swimming pool. I have to cover it so that I can sit on it. You know, it was a it was a rewarded, awarded uh, hotel. Yeah, many times because it's beautiful, lush with f scenery and flowers and yeah. Actually, I say we have to write a letter to thank the government, you know, for taking care of us and letting us come. It's true also. Yeah, it's not like easy uh, like you Americans or you know whoever they want to come just jump on the airplane if there is a place and then you come. Yeah, <laughs> it's different in many countries still. It's still free travel is uh, is a luxury. You know, actually, anybody who believes in any religion sincerely, they are, they cannot be anything bad. Yeah. You know, even not initiated by me or not touched by me, but if they study the Buddha's teaching or Jesus' teaching, you know, keep the five precepts, they are a good person. Yeah. In Vietnam, if you don't believe in any any religion, if you don't have any religious belief, you know, they call you người vô đạo, meaning you don't have, of course, meaning that you have no religion, yeah? You don't belong to any, but meaning that you, you can do anything. That you're not a moral, morally grounded person, therefore you're not trustworthy, because you, you don't know anything about bad from good, right from wrong. So that word means that you're not a trustworthy person, you're not mor morally educated. So you can do anything without consider the consequence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So in Vietnam, if you scold somebody, vô đạo là, then it's a very bad, very, very bad. <laughs> yeah. I remember when I was young, it's like that, yeah. Vô đạo meaning no religion, also meaning no, no, không có đạo đức á. À, không có đạo mean no moral, yeah, can mean both, yeah. Recently, I heard the president, the present president of China, he said, try somewhere, different places, he said, Buddhism is very, very important for Chinese people. The first time I heard something like that, I was very happy. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't hear it directly, I heard it from Dalai Lama, second hand. <laughs> and the Dalai Lama had an interview on CNN, you know, and that's how I find out. And, and he, the Dalai Lama, of course, was very excited about that, he was very happy about that, yes. Okay, I read you this simple, easy to digest story, easy to remember. It's a Buddhist story, you know. It's a, uh, once upon a time, once I have heard, yeah? Yeah. yeah, the Buddha told, and Anand remember, yeah. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha, I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect, it's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. The name is Lotus, the Lotus Roots, and then the summary is that who, one who has learned to appreciate the happiness of detachment will turn away from worldly pleasures, avoiding them as if they were bringing him disgrace or harm. Yeah. Now, once the Bodhisattva, meaning the Buddha from a lifetime, this is a story of a Buddha's uh, previous life. Yeah. Once the Bodhisattva was born to an illustrious family of Brahmins, renowned for their virtues and freedom, from vice, I mean they are very morally sound, yeah, they free from any bad negative trace, all right, so he had six younger brothers who bearing whose bearing and traits were similar to his own, meaning all the seven brothers are very morally sound, very good and virtuous people, yeah even though they are born in Brahmins and uh, wealthy family, but they have very good uh, characters. And, and he has also a sister, yeah, all of whom imitated him in every way out of affection and esteem for him in the firstborn, I mean the Bodhisattva in this story, I mean the Buddha's former, one of his former life, okay? All the... Uh, six brothers and one sister, they all imitate him because he's such a good example of virtues and moral conduct. Yeah, so having studied the sacred Vedas, Vedas is the, like a sutra, the Bible of the Hinduism, yeah, and an old, long, long ancient text, yeah. And the Hindu people, the people who belong to Hinduism, they believe, of course, in goodness, in moral, in reincarnation, in being a good person and fear God, yeah, believe in God. That's why most of Indian people, they are very good because of that, because of traditional teaching, yeah, Vedas, yeah. Having studied the sacred Vedas and mastered the science of medicine, martial arts, music and craftsmanship, 
he was highly regarded by all people, the, the former Buddha, the yeah, former life of the Buddha. Yeah. He was a devoted son to his parents, respecting them as if they were gods. To his brothers, he was like a spiritual teacher or father, instructing them in all, sci all the sciences. He was skilled in worldly affairs and distinguished by his impeccable discipline and way of life. Is a perfect person, yeah. Of course, a former Buddha, you know, <laughs> former reincarnation of Buddha. At that time, he's Bodhisattva, you know. He's not yet a Buddha. But of course, he's been a Buddha ever, ever since nobody can even remember, of course. Remember I told you that? And then he reincarnated again, life after life, just to earn enough merit again to rescue, save many souls. Yeah. If you're born here, you have to earn your merit again. Yeah. Maybe you can take a little bit from the former existence, but you're not allowed a lot. Not allowed a lot. <laughs> just like you go on an airplane, one hand pack. <laughs> And baggage, yeah? Yeah. All right. But this is different. In aeroplane, you can pay for extra luggage. Here, no. <laughs> Even if you're Buddha, like Sekamoni, like that, he has to be reborn again, again, and again since he left Nirvana so that he can earn merit by letting himself be killed, be harassed, or offering himself sacrifice, all kind of things in order to become Buddha again, and then to save so many souls. Yeah. My God, and to earn merit here, oh God. Whew, you know it, right? <laughs> How difficult. Yeah. You know it yourself. <laughs> yeah, mostly you only know karma, you don't know merit. <laughs> so difficult to earn anything here. Whatever you earn, maybe you do some good things. And then you feel proud about it. That's it. The negative power took it away. Because it's proud. Proudness is from the mind. It's if you feel proud, then the mind take it. The mind is from the negative level. Understand? The mind is from the second level. So if you told everybody and boast about it, or be just to feel proud about it, oh, I did some good thing, then you're done. You're finished. You finished that merit. You're gone. You're finished, your marriage is gone. Yeah. And if you talk again about it and you own it, you have to, <laughs> you have to do it again or else, you know, you have to be reborn to do it again. This is a problem. It's not like if you do something good here, then the Maya would say, oh, what a good, give her a reward, give her a medal or something, you know, like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even the Bodhisattva, like a Buddha reincarnated. He always tried to do good, but the the chakra, you know, the god of the, the god of the god, of thirty three level gods, always come and uh, and harass him, torture him, tested him in so many painful way. Huh? It's not like he he knows the Buddha is good and then oh he support or help him in any way. No, God even the god of the thirty three heavens. Imagine anybody else down here or in hell or astral level, huh? understand me? Yeah, okay. So it's no wonder many masters suffer, né? The real masters suffer a lot. Even the Buddha, no? He has a, he has a royal, he, he, he ruled the whole land he, and he forsake it. He don't want, he didn't want it. And still they doubt him. Yeah, of course, the bad people everywhere. And Jesus, no? Yeah, all he does is teaching good things. And they crucify him. Instead of, and they let go of one. They could pardon one criminal. And they pardon the thief, the robber, instead of pardon Jesus. What has he done? Nothing. You see, they could have pardoned him. No, they crucify him instead. They can forgive one criminal, but don't forgive, did not forgive Jesus. Understand this? Yes. Yeah. And Jesus is not the only one who's been tortured like that. Countless of master ever time since time in memorials. They die, they die, suffer pain, or they do all kind of torture, you know, to make them die in, in such a suffering way. It's not just normal. I'm lucky to be born in this life. 
uh, still have a lot of trouble, but, <laughs> you know, at least the law protects sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, okay. So now, <clears throat> yeah, so he, he is an impeccable person, impec impeccable person of uh, moral and exemplary virtuous uh, being. So when in the course of time uh, his parents die, yeah, the loss deeply moved him, of course, né? if he loves his parents and so filial like that, of course he would feel very, very shaken. Huh? Yeah. After the funeral ceremonies and after some days spent in mourning, he assembled his brothers and spoke to them. Thus, although we wish to remain together forever, death is sure to separate us from those we love. That is life. Yeah. This is the way of the world, and it is a source of deep grief and pain. And so I wish to renounce the householder's life so that death will not seize me while, while I am still attached to a worldly life. Yeah. I intend to walk homeless on the road to enlightenment. Having so decided, I wish to give you some parting advice. Our family has a good deal of wealth earned in an honest fashion. With it, you can easily sustain yourself. Stay here as householders then, in a right and proper manner. Love and respect each other, take care to follow the moral precepts, and maintain the practice of virtue. Study the sacred texts and always be prepared to meet the wishes of your friends, your guests, and your kin. In short, apply yourselves to the Dharma, meaning the right, righteous teaching of ancient master, yeah? either from the Buddhas or from the Vedas, yeah? from the ancient Hinduism. Always act in a disciplined manner and in harmony with one another. Delight in study and in giving alms. Giving alms, yeah? Okay. Let restraint ornament your lives as householders. Your good reputations will increase along with your virtues and wealth, bringing you happiness in this life and in your future lives as well. But this talk, you know, he finished his advice to his brothers and sister. And now he finished. Yeah, he's done. Unquote. <laughs> And now, but this talk of the householder's life and of, of separation greatly distressed his brothers. <laughs> they don't like it. <coughs> They're so used to with sticking around him, I guess, the big brother, you know. And now the parents already die, so they have no one else except this, uh, you know, exemplary brother for them to take refuge in and to look up on to. Huh? Hmm. Overcome with grief, not only they don't care about the wealth that he left behind for all of them, and you know they don't care about good life, nothing. They say overcome with grief, they are, their faces wet with tears. They bow, they bow, bow respectfully and said to, you know, uh, big brother, our father's death is still fresh in our minds. Pray, do not inflict a new grief upon us. The misery of our parents' death is still with us. Your decision is like salt rubbed, on, rubbed onto, into an open wound. If you are truly convinced that attachment to the householder's life is unwise and the forest life is the only path to true happiness, why do you wish to depart alone, leaving us here without our protector? The life you choose will be ours as well. We too will renounce the world with you. Yeah. The Bodhisattva, I mean, former Buddhas, reply. 
Those unaccustomed to detachment cannot but follow blindly after worldly desires. They see no difference between giving up the world and jumping off a cliff. Knowing this, I restrain myself from urging you to follow me. But if, it's, but if it would truly please you, well then, let us leave home together. So all seven brothers, together with their sister, gave up their wealthy estate and enjoyments. Taking leave of whipping friends and relatives, they became homeless ascetics. And with them into the forest there went, and out of affection, one of their friends and two of their servants, one male and one female, they also left with them two servants <laughs> and one friend, yeah, one of the friends and two servants, yeah. So they discovered a large lake in the forest, its water pure as blue. By day, the lake was alight with beauty. Masses of open lotus blossoms floated in the sparkling water, and swarms of bees hummed above the water, the waves. By night, the kumunda flowers opened their blossoms. Ah, oh, mouth watering! What a beautiful life! Nowadays you can't find such a lake. Don't don't even think about it. <laughs> if there is such a lake, they build houses around already and rent to tourists, <laughs> and they build big car, big row for cars, a truck, bus loaded with tourists. You know, go there and they probably swim in there all day and live, live fire your water. Already. Yeah, the same. There was a lake in Austria. You know where I had a hotel there, vegan hotel and restaurant. Beautiful water, you can drink, they say, it's a clean water. But they go and swim all over it, who would like to drink it, yeah. you know? Understand? Yes. Yeah. And the water is uh, like uh, warm, you know, 28 degree. Yeah, yeah. Even in winter it doesn't freeze. Yeah. So it's a very famous place. And we have, I have a hotel there. And uh, and a vegan restaurant where we open only some money. Eh? Right. All right. So now, wow, it would be nice. Eh? I told you I read some of the nice story and it make me mouth watering. Such a life, no? Found a lake with lotus, you know, and sparkling clean water. Yeah, no man there, you know. Nowadays, such lake, uh, I don't think exists anymore. You know, if it does exist, you know already. Houses are surrounding and cars and, you know, people with bikini <laughs> laying on the deck somewhere, you know, or walk around and with the big radio or <laughs> beep, beep, pa, pa, you know, cars. <laughs> yeah. So if you sit there, then I don't know if you can enter Samadhi quickly or not. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so now this group of people, yeah. They discover a large lake in the forest already, uh, read all that, and they, uh, all the flowers open there with the lotus and all that. There on the shore, they built huts out of palm front at some distance from each other, and so they don't have to always bomb into each other, so they can be quiet and alone. Yeah. Each hut solitary and hidden in the shadows of the trees. Isn't that nice? Oh. Such a freedom, huh? Maybe one day we go and hide somewhere if we find a lake like that. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Nowadays, helicopter, they see you everywhere. You know, <laughs> satellite, <laughs> they can pinpoint where you even go to pee. <laughs> even if you hide in the bush, right? <laughs> they can come down, land down, surprise you. Hey! <laughs> I know what you're doing now. <laughs> surprise! <laughs> Sorry, but surprise! Oops! <laughs> Oops, we didn't mean to. <laughs> In India, you don't always find a public toilet, no. They have public house for you, but not public toilet. Not all the time, because you go into the Himalaya, the wild area, it's still very wild. 
Many places is no no houses, yeah, no facility, nothing, no buses, no car. Yeah. And some place they may have donkeys or horses for you to rent. But some place even the horse cannot go through. You have to walk. <laughs> and we're preca precarious, huh? Precarious walk. Sometimes landslide it happened. It happened to me. <laughs> yeah, we were on the bus and then the whole mountain like crumpling down. And every panic want to run out of the bus and I was the one who saved the day. It's proud to tell you. But I told you already this story before. I told him, no, 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 don't go out. <laughs> go out now, you die. Where are your guru? Pray, pray to your guru. <laughs> and later they all come to thank me, you know. I love this story, I keep telling you again and again. <laughs> yeah, but who wouldn't be scared, you know? But I was surprised how come I was so calm. I'm surprised. You know? Everybody run back and forth to the bus trying to open the door. I just so calm and tell them, no, where's your guru? Pray to, pray to them. Yeah. One time, yeah, in emergency, I was so calm sometimes, even before as a householder. One time, my ex-husband and I, he was driving uh, to some places for a holiday or something, I forgot. But it was in winter and uh, the road is very slippery because of ice, you know. Ice on the road, not not snow. Snow is okay, but ice. And then suddenly the the car was running, turning, and veer to the right, and then run right to the clip, you know. But during the spinning, you know, oh, I I tell him, don't worry, Kwanin Bodhisattva will protect you. <laughs> At that time, I only knew Kwanin Bodhisattva, you know. I touched his chest. I said, don't worry, Kwanin Bodhisattva will protect you. And then suddenly the car. Just a veer down, but uh, stuck in the snow only, on on the cliff, you know, down there, but not 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 uh, turn upside down, yeah. And then we, luckily, is very near a farm, <laughs> a farm, and the farm has a, has a, a, a truck with this uh, kind of crane or, yeah, I pick my car out, our car out. He said it happened. A lot of times, so he always had this <laughs> crane around him. <laughs> and then they let us stay in their house for a night, you know, pick the car out in the morning, uh, repair, and then we go. Yeah, so kind, yeah. If there's not that, because it was very late at night, he has to work the whole day and then until late. And then we went escape, you know, <laughs> escape work. He's free. And at that time, winter, nobody driving in that remote country road. That's the thing. If it has not been for that farm, just a few ten meters from us, we would die, we'd freeze. You know, even sit in the car, but the car is, is you know, deep in the snow and the head down, you know, stuck, cannot get out. So we could not even take refuge in that car. How how you sit like this, you know, 49 degree, for 90 degree in the snow with the car, even if if the trap inside you can't even open. <laughs> lucky we could even get out. Yeah, I was really lucky. Mm. Okay, now why do I tell you this stuff? What was that before? Huh? Oh, the toilet, I think. It was about Huh? The toilet? The uh -huh. toilet in India sometimes? Yeah, and then? Oh, yeah. Ah, okay. Mm, not really, is it? Mm, okay. Hotel, Austro Hotel. <laughs> you guys are not listening. The story, the story that was beautiful. The lake. The scenery. The scenery. Like in the lake uh, in Austria. Uh huh. Beautiful and the, lake. And, and then why? The, the, was the bees were humming. And then why does he go to Germany with a stuck car? <laughs> because, <laughs> no, because he said today. Himalaya, the, Himalaya uh, the remote area. 
cùng xem tiết mục hôm nay tựa đề truyện cổ Phật giáo Củ Sen phần 2 trong 6 phần trên giữa thầy và trò xin vui lòng giữ đài truyền hình vô thượng sư để xem thêm nhiều chương trình khẳng định tiếp theo là giữ vững các nguyên tắc hòa bình để tuân theo điều răn của Chúa phỏng vấn mục sư Etienne Lam bà từ giáo hội phong trào cải cách cơ đốc phục lâm phần 1 trên 3 trên lời thánh khải cầu mong quý vị luôn nhận biết quý vị được thương yêu vô hạn may you always be aware that you are loved beyond measure để biết thêm thông tin xin vui lòng truy cập supremastertv.com forward slash bmd 